<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is shoe. S-H-O-E. Shoe sure enough? <laughs> you bet your life. The more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers of America present Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood. And here he is, the one, the only... Groucho! That's me, Groucho Marx! Well, here I am again with $1,500 for one of our couples tonight. Benjamin, who's face to try for it? Groucho, just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected a young mother and a grandfather. And here they are, Mrs. Sherry Van Pelt and Mr. Frederick Hall meet Groucho Marx. Well, welcome, welcome, welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. And if you say the secret word, you'll divide $100. It's a common word, something you, you have with you. A young mother and a grandma. A young mother and a grandmother. No, a grandfather, huh? <laughs> Mrs. Sherry Van Pelt. That's a pretty fancy name, isn't it? Uh, how old are you, Sherry? Eighteen. Eighteen, huh? And a mother? Mm-hmm. Land sakes, these new inventions they have today. Huh? <laughs> Grandpa, uh, Frederick Hall is your name. Is that, is that right? That's right. Frederick Hall. Where, where are you from, uh, Pappy? I was originally from Massachusetts, born in Rockport, about 36 miles north of Boston. Came to Los Angeles in 1910. Well, you're really an old, uh, an old settler, eh? Almost a native son. How, how old are you? Uh? I'm 73. 73? Well, you don't look it. I thought you were about 60. What sort of work do you do, Mr.? Uh... Well, I'm at present practicing law. For 18 years, I was serving the city of Los Angeles as public defender up to 48. Well, the city of Los Angeles can use all the defending you can get. Huh? <laughs> what sort of work does your husband do, uh, Sherry? He's a machine operator for a television antenna manufacturer. You, you say he's a machine operator? Yeah. Uh-huh. And how'd you meet him? Oh, we were Was he operating at the time? Eh? <laughs> <laughs> you met in school? Yes. Yeah. You happily married? Oh, yeah. Well, that's, that's unusual. <laughs> As a young mother, did you have any children? Naturally. <laughs> Naturally, you say, well, I'm glad to hear it. <laughs> What you, what you meant was that you couldn't be a mother unless you had children, isn't that, isn't that it? Of course. <laughs> well, that's not quite true. I've got children, and I'm not a mother. <laughs> how many, uh, how many whippersnappers do you have? Uh, how many uh, children do you have? One. <laughs> girl. A girl? Mm-hmm. How old is this little girl? One year. Did you give up a career to get married? School. You were glad to get out of the classroom, mm-hmm. huh? <laughs> What was there about your husband that swept you off your feet? Oh. Could you talk a little bit louder? Mm-hmm. You look beautiful, but they'd also like to hear what you're saying out there. Huh? You'll either have to talk louder or do grinds or something. Huh? <laughs> he, was, he was good looking? Had a nice car. Real smooth. He was smooth, eh? <laughs> what do you mean by smooth? You mean he hadn't started to shave yet? <laughs> Grandpa, you're still over there, aren't you? Oh, yes, I'm here. I'm Glad to hear. It isn't often that old granddad lasts this long. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not the point. Let's get back to where we were. Huh? Uh, uh, do you have any children? Uh, Four. Two you... boys, two girls. Uh-huh. Grandchildren? Eight. Mm-hmm. Were any of your grandchildren named after you? No, they were not. Uh, my younger son married a bishop's daughter, and so they took the names of their children out of the Bible. They have Peter and Matthew, Luke and Mark. Well, now, the next one may be Hezekiah, I don't know. <laughs> Might be Rachel. How long have you been married, uh, Fred? Forty-six years. Have you been happy all that time? Absolutely. Forty-six years of marriage, two wars, a stock market crash. Yes, we have no bananas and the thing. <laughs> And through it all, I want to ask you one question. I, I want to ask you, why didn't you shoot yourself? Huh? Well, I never was able to get a gun that I thought I could hold. <laughs> now, what are the problems that confront a year-old bride? Oh, mostly that uh, she can't find any friends that 
are married that are that young. Grandpa, are you still happy? Uh, what do you suggest? How can uh, Sherry find some friends her age? Well, I'd suggest perhaps joining some club, youthful membership. You mean like the campfire girls? That'd be good. Yeah. I was a campfire girl until my voice started to change right in the middle of Polly Wally Doodle all the day. <laughs> You belong to any clubs? Yeah, I belong to the Elks. The Elks, huh? Mm -hmm. Oh, is that so? How long have you been an Elk? Thirty years. Well, you're a fine-looking specimen. <laughs> How much would you charge to hang over my fireplace? Well, I might uh, do it for consideration. Now, what is the purpose of the Elks Club? Well, primarily charity, and uh, this year we're adopting the program of nationally of cerebral palsy. We initiated a program which we hope will be carried out throughout the United States. Well, all this world needs is more people like you, uh, Fred. Grandpa, you're still happy, aren't you? Oh, yes, yeah, still happy. Well, I'm happy that you're happy. Well, I'm Confidentially, happy. now, in all your years of, of marriage, have you ever kissed anybody besides your wife? Well, not seriously. <laughs> Well, you've got a wonderful opportunity right now, eh, oh, Jerry? Oh, boy. <laughs> Jerry, you, you wouldn't mind kissing a man who's old enough to be your great-grandfather, would you? No. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Fred, you can take the other side, huh? Okay, I'll do that. Well, now, let's get down to serious business. As though that wasn't, eh? <laughs> now, in just one minute, you're going to play your bet your life for a chance at the $1,500 question. Right, right now, there's an important matter I want you to know about. It's here! It's new! It's designed for you! DeSoto! DeSoto is the car that's a revelation to ride. DeSoto Plymouth dealers now present it nationwide. So drive a new DeSoto before you decide. The 51 DeSoto, that's a revelation to ride. Yes, revelation is the word to describe the pleasure you'll get driving as well as riding in the great new 1951 DeSoto. All across the country, in every state and every city, car owners are proving this to themselves by getting behind the wheel of this proud new car. They're experiencing for the first time what riding comfort there is in DeSoto's brand new Auraflow shock absorbers and spring construction as these wonderful new features level out the bumpiest roads. They're experiencing the thrill of the new, higher-powered DeSoto engine with its extra get-up-and-go. They're relaxing on DeSoto's luxurious chair-high seats and knowing an entirely new feeling of security because of DeSoto's bigger brakes that stop you quickly and easily. And, of course, it's DeSoto that lets you drive without shifting. So no wonder... All over the country, they're buying... The 51 DeSoto, that's a revelation to ride. See it tomorrow, for sure. All right, here we go. Now, let's see how high you can build your $20. You selected familiar words beginning with the letter C. Now, here's your first question. You have $20. How much are you going to risk? Ten. You're partners okay. in this together now. $10? What do you call a student in a military or naval academy? It begins with the letter C. Cadet. Cadet. A cadet is right. Well, you have $30. You're flying high here, Pappy. You got $30. Remember, you're going for $1,500 tonight. How much of the $30 are you going to try? Well, we ought to try about $20, don't you think? All right. What do you call the freightman's car that is attached to a train? It begins with the letter C. Caboose. Caboose is right. Well, you're climbing. You have $50 now. All right. You got $50. Here's your third question. How much are you going to try? That's right. Okay. Forty-five. What do you call a crested bird of the parrot family? It begins with the letter C. Cockatoo. Cockatoo is right. Now you have ninety-five dollars. Grandpa spent a lot of time in the woods, I think. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't chasing elks all the time. <laughs> Here's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much are you going to bet? Okay. Eighty How bucks. much? Eighty bucks. Eighty bucks. What do you call the little colored pieces of paper thrown at parties and parades that begins with the letter C? <laughs> Confetti is right. And you wind up with a grand total of one hundred and seventy-five dollars. 
Stick around, Sherry. I'll see you later. <laughs> well, Groucho, the secret word is still shoe. Uh, we invited some chefs from Mexican restaurants to the program tonight, and just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Roque Valdivia. His partner is a housewife, Mrs. Kathleen Duffy. Folks, come in here and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. Say the secret word and you divide $100. It's a common word, something you have with you. Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Kathleen Duffy. You're the housewife, huh? Yes, where, where are you from? That's a... Corsicana, Texas. Corsicana, Texas. It's needless to me to ask you uh, what uh, nationality you are. I mean, way back, I know you were born in this country. But Kathleen Duffy is really a good old Irish name, isn't it? Yes, sir. Can you speak Gaelic at all? <laughs> speak English? A little. Oh, that's enough for me, huh? Uh, uh, where is your native uh, habitat? I just told you. Well, that serves me right for using words I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> what sort of work does your husband do? He's a personnel manager for CPS. CPS? Now, what is CPS? Well, that's California Physician Service, Blue Shield. Well, how'd you meet him? Were you, were you introduced to him? Well, there was more to it than that. Well, I hope so, but, uh... <laughs> now, how'd you meet him, Katie? Well... I'll call you Katie, huh? All right. I, I named was... you after a railroad. <laughs> I was coming home one I'll afternoon. I'll make tracks for you later. <laughs> <laughs> and as I came up the front walk, I saw this very nice-looking young man coming out the front door. And as he started down the front steps, I noticed that he had all of my silverware in his hands. And he explained to me that his mother had been having a dinner party or was going to have one, she had called my neighbor and had asked if she could borrow the neighbor's silver. So he had come to what he thought was the neighbor's house but had gotten into my house by mistake and had picked up my silver and started out the door with it and he wasn't a burglar at all. <laughs> Were you disappointed? No. <laughs> You'll have to pardon me for being a little confused tonight. Somebody gave me a new boomerang for my birthday and I've driven myself crazy trying to throw the old one away. <laughs> What sort of work do you do, uh, Mr. Uh, Valdi uh, Valdivia? Is that uh, Mexican restaurant? You're from a Mexican restaurant? Oh, yes. Well, uh, buenas noches, senor. Buenas noches, senor. Uh, Como esta? Oh, muy bien. You said? I'm fine. I speak Spanish fluently, huh? <laughs> so be careful what you say. <laughs> Where are you stead from, senor? <laughs> Yo vengo de la República Mexicana, León, Guanajuato. Well, is that uh, with coffee or just plain? <laughs> uh, what is the name of your uh, establishment? El Coyote Spanish Cafe, 105 No La Brea, Los Angeles. Well, what do you what do you serve in your restaurant? Mexican food dishes. Well, Mexican, Mexican dishes. dishes? Real Mexican dishes. Could you serve me a tall one who likes the smell of a good cigar? <laughs> 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 I mean specifically, what do you serve? Like uh, chili con carne? Enchiladas, chili rellenos, tacos. And huevo y jamón. What time do you stop at Acapulco? Huh? <laughs> well, let's take them one, uh, one. Did you ever hear the Mexican weather report? Well, Chilly today and hot tamale? That's an old joke. <laughs> <laughs> Senior, why, why is Mexican food so hot? Well, it runs back to the history of the Indians that started growing the Chile. The Chile is very hot. The country is very warm. And the country, so Mexico, is, is, a, the is a hot country. country. It's a very hot country. That's, that's odd, because some, of, is, uh, some of my friends recently went to Mexico because it was too hot for them here in L.A. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks to you, too, I know a great deal about Mexican food. Now, let's see if you know a great deal about these questions. You've got to run your $20 into more than our other couples, you'll get a chance at the $1,500. That's the DeSoto Plymouth big question. Fenneman's offstage to remind our listeners how much the... The young mother and the grandfather won $175. I can give you $20. You selected fictional crime solvers. Here's your first question. You have $20. How much are you going to go for? $15. Talk right up, Katie. No, not too high. Ten. Ten. Ten dollars. Ten dollars? Ten dollars. Ten dollars, huh? All right. Sir, Arthur Conan Doyle created what detective? Sherlock Holmes. Sherlock Holmes is right. And you're on your way. You have thirty dollars. All right, you got thirty bucks. You're going for fifteen hundred dollars tonight. How much of the thirty are you going to bet? Twenty-five. Talk up. Twenty-five. 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 
How much would that be in pesos? Oh, that's a big figure, mister. I mean... Well, you've got a big figure, too. <laughs> How much would that be in pesos? I have to get my pencil. That's, uh... You have to get your pencil? Hey. What kind of pencil? <laughs> How much is that in pesos? Uh, one dollar is eight, eight dollar, eight, one... No, you figure it up. I'm not from Mexico, huh? <laughs> it's a lot of money. Oh, it's a lot of money, huh? No, I don't care big. Well, Dad Biggers created a portly Chinese detective who was the father of a large family. Who is it? Charlie Chan. Charlie Chan is right. Now you're trying to $55. All right, you got 55 bucks. Here's your third question. How much are you going to bet? 50. Talk up, Katie. 50. 50. This is really the melting pot, isn't 50. it? 50. 50. 50, 50. 50, 50 dollars you're going to bet? Now, how much is that in pesos? <laughs> All right, uh, Dashiell Hammett created a tough private detective with a secretary named Effie. He was also on the radio. Who is it? Sam Spade. Sam Spade is right. <laughs> now you have $105. That little Irish lass is a pretty shrewd cookie. Hmm? Is your last chance to beat the other couple? How much are we going to bet at 105? What? Oh. Whoa. Yes. Oh. Won't we bet all? No. I want to have a car fare to go home. I'll give it to you. Let's bet it all. Katie will give you a car fare to go home. Yes. How much are you going to bet? Okay, how much? Where do you live? Where do you live? He what? lives in San Diego. All right, let's bet it all. Okay. Yes. You're going to bet $105? Now, how much is that in Mexican peso? <laughs> I want to figure. I want you oh, to figure that out. Oh, that's 860 pesos. And uh, let's see, it's 860. It's uh, 900 and close to 1,000 pesos. That is... That's, you'd be loaded in Mexico, oh. huh? I'd be a man over there. You'd be, I'm you'd be a, a big shot over mister, there. Mister, mister. Yeah. Okay, you'd be a mister. Here we go. Earl Stanley Gardner created a lawyer who solves crimes. His secretary is Zella Street. Who is it? Perry Mason. Perry Mason is right. You also won two hundred and ten dollars. Uh, <laughs> how much is that in pesos? <laughs> oh, I mean, I'm gonna have to get my pencil. All right, we'll see you later, kids. Uh, you Thank stick you around much. now, huh? Uh, Groucho, secret word is still shoe. Uh, we invited some airline hostesses and some jockeys to the program tonight. Just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Miss Dorothy Goff, Mr. Gordon Glisson, and here they are, folks. Meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, youngsters. Do you bet your life? You say the secret word, you'll divide $100. It's a common word, something you have with you. An airline hostess and a, and a jockey, yeah? Miss, Miss Dorothy Goff, is that, is that right? That's right. Well, where are you from? Uh... I'm from Seattle, Washington. Uh-huh. And uh, somebody out there from Spokane. <laughs> <laughs> you live in L.A. now, Dorothy? Yes, I do. Uh-huh. Which of the airlines do you, do you work for, Dorothy? I work for Western Airlines. Uh-huh. You're the, you're the jockey, Gordon? I'll call you Gordon, huh? Yes, sir. Where, where are you from? Uh... I'm from Winsboro, South Carolina. Are you married? No, sir. How old are you, Gordon? Twenty. Twenty, yeah. What's your age, uh, Dorothy? I'm twenty-two. You're twenty and you're, t- you're twenty-two, huh? You want to know how old I am? Yes, how old are you? I'm not going to tell. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just want to see if you care. <laughs> how, how, uh, how tall are you, uh, Dorothy? <laughs> I'm five foot four and a half. Uh-huh. And you, uh, how tall are you? Uh, tall? I'm about four foot eleven. See, you're just about the right size for each other. It's amazing how I get these perfect matches. Of, of <laughs> you're a very attractive girl, Dorothy. Are all airline hostesses as uh, pretty as you are? Well, the company makes it a point to hire girls on the attractive side. <laughs> well, I don't know which is your attractive side, but there's nothing... <laughs> There's certainly nothing wrong with the one I'm looking at. <laughs> Why do the airlines insist on attractive hostesses? Well, they think it's good for business. Well, it is. There's nothing like an attractive hostess to keep a man up in the air. <laughs> oh, 
Dorothy. Now, is there anything about your passengers, Dorothy, that, that annoys you? Uh, yes. Passengers who don't what? abide by the rules, such as... Such uh, as what? Not fastening their seat belts and getting on board with liquor, smoking cigars and pipes, and <laughs> <laughs> are only supposed to smoke cigarettes. You mean I can't smoke my cigar on your plane? Well, we use discretion, and, uh... Well, I use tobacco. I, use tobacco. <laughs> I find it's far superior than discretion. If you don't annoy the lady passengers, you may. You mean I can smoke cigars if I don't annoy the lady passengers? That's right. <laughs> well, in that case, I won't smoke my cigar. I'd much rather annoy the women passengers. I didn't know there was a choice. <laughs> By the way, Gordon, where, where do you do your riding? Uh, right now, I'm riding at Santa Anita. Uh-huh. Did you always ride at Santa Anita? No, sir, I ride... Uh, I have ridden practically every uh, track in the country, and... Is that I, so? I'd yeah. like to see you ride the Santa Fe track to Albuquerque. <laughs> now, as a jockey, what about you, Gordon? I, I presume you've had many thrilling experiences, haven't you? What's the biggest thrill you ever had? I guess uh, the biggest... One of the biggest thrills I ever had was uh, being leading rider of the country last year. You were the yeah. leading writer of the country? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, sir. Oh, well, I'd have much more respect for you had I known that. Huh? <laughs> and, uh, I thought you were just an apprentice jockey. <laughs> How about it, Dorothy? Are you beginning to feel uh, romantically inclined towards this young squid? <laughs> am, am I doing a good job of bringing you two together? I think I liked him a little older, a little taller, and more in my line of work. I see. Gordon, is, is there good money in horse racing? For oh, example, yeah. how much does a top jockey earn in a year? Well, most of the top riders earn anywhere from 75000 to 100000 a year. Really? Yes, sir. Did, uh, were you aware of that, Dorothy? No, I wasn't. <laughs> Gordon, as far as Dorothy is concerned, you just aged a couple of years. <laughs> and at a couple of feet in height, and she just loves horses. <laughs> Dorothy, I'm only kidding. I know you're not interested in a man who makes a paltry $100,000 a year. No. <laughs> it's just chicken feed, a paltry $100,000. Paltry $100,000. <laughs> just chicken feed, a paltry $100,000. <laughs> if you think you're going to escape from that joke, you're a mad. Eh? <laughs> By the way, that's some animal cracker. The Mexican weather report, chilly today and hot tamale. I didn't get any laughs at all. <laughs> Didn't get much better this time. <laughs> I guess there's not much interest in the Mexican weather up here. Well, thanks to you two, I know all about horses and airplanes. <coughs> and in the future, I'll be sure to keep both feet on the ground, and I hope you two are very happy together. <laughs> uh, let's see how well you make out on the quiz. You run your $20, and you're more than the other couples, and you'll get a chance at the $1,500 question. I can't tell you how much the other couples won, but Fenneman's off stage remind our listeners. The Mexican chef and the housewife are leading with $210. Here we go. Let's see how high you can build your $20. You selected capitals of states. And here is Fenneman, the valiant. Now, how much are you going to bet on the first question? Five. $5? What is the capital of Colorado? Denver. Denver is right. Are you on your way? You have $25. Remember, now you're going for $1,500 tonight. How much of your 15 are you going to bet on your second question? No, 25. Then. 25 they have. How much are you going to bet on your second question? It shows you how much attention I pay to you. 20. 20? Fifteen. Fifteen. What is the capital of South Carolina? Columbia. Columbia is right. <laughs> you have forty dollars now. Have forty dollars. Here's your third question. How much are you going to bet? How much you have? Forty. Twenty. 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 What is the capital of New Hampshire? Mm -hmm. Talk it over. Talk it over. <laughs> I don't know. You've been flying the wrong route. <laughs> I have. I, I'm sorry. It's conquered. You now have $20. All right. You only got $20. It's your last chance to be the other couples. You're coming on the rail now. You're on the inside. And you're coming through there, Gordon. It's your last chance. What is the capital of New York? Albany. Albany is right. You wind up with $40. You wound up with $40, and that means that the, the big... Mexican chef and the housewife with $210. How much is that in peso? <laughs> <laughs> Get the chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $1,500 question. See you later, kids. Stick huh? around with the big money, yeah? It's here. It's new. It's designed for you, DeSoto. 
Yes, here's a car that's really different this year. The 1951 DeSoto. With more new beauty, more new power, more new riding comfort than ever before. Every luxury, every convenience, every economy has been designed into this finest of fine DeSotos to give you the driving pleasure you've always dreamed about. Yet the new DeSoto, the car that's really new and different, costs very little more than the very lowest price cars. And it lets you drive without shifting. DeSoto gives you chair-high seats, big 12-inch brakes, waterproof ignition, new type automatic choke, increased visibility, and most wonderful of all, the ride's a revelation, thanks to the amazing cushioning action of the new Auraflow shock absorbers. The news is getting around fast. DeSoto is the really new car of 1951. That's why folks all over are flocking to see the 51 DeSoto. That's a revelation to ride. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell the great new Plymouth. And here comes the winning couple, Groucho. The Mexican chef and the housewife all set for the DeSoto Plymouth $1,500 question. You know, if you should win this money, you're going to have to tell me how much this is in pesos. <laughs> so maybe you better throw it. <laughs> all right, here we go. Here we go for $1,500. I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you. Think carefully. And no help from the audience. Here it is. A girl named Mary Ball became the mother of a famous American. For $1,500, tell me... Who was Mary Ball's son? All right, what is the answer you two have decided upon? That, that was for Bank you. No, no, I'm sorry. It's George Washington. You're away. <laughs> Correct answer is George Washington. So that means the big question next week will be worth two thousand dollars. Well, you lost the big money, but you won uh, how much? Two hundred and ten dollars. Two hundred and ten dollars in the quiz. Congratulations and thanks to both of you and to all of our contestants on the show tonight. Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at this time for the Groucho Marx Show when the big question will be worth $2,000. And don't miss Groucho's television show, also presented by the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth. Two great cars, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. Good night, folks, and remember... Now just be sure to visit your DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Folks, here's a reminder from the National Safety Council. Start your car with your garage doors open and warm up outside. You Bet Your Life, transcribed from Hollywood, is produced by John Goodell, directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith, music by Jerry Fielding. This is George Fenneman signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. (laughs) 